All right, everybody, today we're building foundry patterns from original Champion Blower and Forge parts. All right, well, the first order of business on uh, fixing this part here is we have to separate these two pieces here. Uh, this is just a little ratchet paw, but it's just riveted onto this, this other part. So we're going to see if we can uh, use a chisel and Here's chisel it. Kind of a single bevel deal i got a regular cold chisel here which would probably work but this one i'm kind of hoping to just cut this head away from the uh from the casting let's see here if we can find a good way to set this i suppose since we're doing cold work we should work on the step this is a very awkward part to hold <laughs> all right let's see how this works seem to catch into it there there you go there's the head come on apart all right i found a punch here that fits in there pretty decently now these are a set of harbor freight ones and i can see why nobody likes them because they're they're not hardened properly so they don't hold up very good, but they certainly are cheap. All right, got it out of that piece. Okay, and I'll, Peter, I'll save this and we'll send it back to you. That way you know what size uh, size you need. It's got to be that plus a uh, eh, quarter of an inch or so. Okay, I think. Uh, there ain't very much to remove here, so I think I might just try just filing on it and see, uh, see how tough this will be to just file it. You can kind of see like high and low spots going on here. See how there's a little recess right there? So uh, this is stuff that's... This is a little bit spotty, I suppose, on like whether this is actually... Would come out of the mold pretty easily. I, I don't think it would be a huge problem, but... Uh, you definitely want to try to get it as good as you can here. You can see what I'm talking about right here with the wear. How it's kind of worn in. That's where this thing has been. For the last century or so, it's been landing right there. <laughs> so really, maybe I should just leave that and maybe chamfer this back the rest of the way. And that'll make it where it fits really good there the whole thing will blend in all right so we'll call that good for prep okay so our initial prep on uh i don't know this is our ratchet wheel i guess or whatever uh shouldn't be too much we just got to take this set screw out here really oh boy that's set in there pretty good <laughs> make sure to save that Square-headed bolts are hard to find. Although probably you can find one of these set screws pretty easily, I would think. That's a pretty easy lathe project if you had to make another one, though. All right, there's our set screw. It looks like, uh, I don't have a ruler, but that's three quarters or an inch probably of threading. All right. See if we got any lumps and bumps on here we need to get rid of. I don't really think too much. Now this, you can see the parting line right inside of there. So everything on that side is gets molded up on one half. And all this back here gets molded up on the other side. And here's the parting line right here. So this, that's going to be a problem right there. So let's file on that. Blend that together some. That should help. Well, that's not too bad. I think that probably will work. All right, now this cam, this thing here has got a lot of, 
a lot of stuff to work on. Like, see all the little bumps and stuff here. This is all. This is what happens when a, a little bit of sand falls out of the mold. Well, the metal goes in, fills in that little hole, so you end up with this, you know, really weird bumpy textures and stuff like that. And there was another piece right here. You could see, see all that junk there, where a big piece popped out of there when they were working on that. So that's got to all go because if we were to mold this up in the sand, well, it's that's going to be trapped in there. When you go to pull it out, it's going to rip all the sand out. So we got to get rid of that. Uh, see what we can get here with the file, and then. Uh, Oh, we'll go find the Dremel, and we'll work on it a little bit with the Dremel. All right, well, I went and got my Dremel. And we've got a small uh, carbide burr here. So, eh, I don't know, I think it's an eighth inch. Let's see if we can't clean up this part here, and then maybe we'll go over these other ones and sort of fine tune them a little too. All right, guys, what we need to do here is uh, I've, I've kind of got this dowel in here and put some nails into it to hold this washer on. And that should make more or less the outlet of a, or the outline of a, a cylinder that's got a little bit of taper. So we can make this a little bit longer. All right, so eh, you could do this with Bondo, but I don't know, this stuff stinks horrible. So this stuff here, I think came about in the 1920s, well, the vintage logo here. Still using this exact same logo all these years later. But uh, this is Durham's Water Putty, or Durham, Durham's Water Putty. And it's, I guess, kind of a gypsum-based material. But it sets pretty quick. Oh, I got a spoon in here already. Very good. And it's supposed to be three parts powder to one part water by weight and I have no idea how much this stuff weighs and I'm probably not even going to try to measure really we'll just slowly kind of add a little bit of water here all right so we're going to cut back and all I'll mix this stuff up here off camera. All right, so we got it mixed up here. That seems about right. It should hold sort of its shape pretty good. Okay, I'll just start spreading it in there, I guess. larger putty knife. This is actually a dental tool. I have a friend who works in a dental laboratory and builds dentures and things like that. He also he also does foundry work and they're very related sort of things. Essentially he's molding up teeth or essentially the part that's the gum in the denture. But this is what they use for their their work. Great tool for this kind of stuff though. In fact, if you remember when we made the uh, boilerplate for a, 
small steam engine. Uh, he was the guy who was doing the pouring. Of course, we properly screwed that job up. I'm putting a lot of extra on here right now, but we'll clean it up in just a minute. We'll have to come back and sand it and clean it up a little bit and see what we need to add on to build it the rest of the way up. We'll let this cure for now. All right, guys, if you enjoy seeing old machinery repaired and put back together, uh, why don't you go ahead and click on the old horizontal mill over here and uh, check out the videos that are coming up below.